Hey, what's up, fellas? We're taking another look at the liquid propane burner here. I've redesigned it a little bit, but you may ask, why bother making such a thing? Here, I'm just testing out the igniter to make sure I'm good to go. And it looks like everything's set. So, remember the other day when we tested this burner, it was able to bring this piece of 10-inch I-beam up to an incandescent temperature out in 30 mile an hour blowing winds, whereas the standard Chinese version that was sent to me for review was unable to do that. And here is that Chinese torch, and we can see the top, the flame is far smaller than the bottom, and that's only about 10 minutes of difference in time. And what happens is over time, the bottle gets really cold and begins to boil down. Get some of that cold stuff. Right, the ice is insulating at this point. So that's how big your flame would be at 0.6 Fahrenheit outside. This is a very common problem for people who use these torches to actually do work or who are trying to run large propane heaters. Anything that consumes a large volume of propane is going to have this problem. Over a course of 10 to 15 minutes, you lose so much pressure, we've lost almost all our power. All right, guys, so I built this little contraption for Joe over at SealerKing.com. They don't got time for the nonsense we've just seen outside. They need something that's going to keep going. Now, I've redesigned this. You guys who saw this last week will notice the plumbing's different. I like it better this way. Okay, we have the propane bottle inverted. You do not need to do this if you have a forklift bottle or a siphon bottle. All right, guys, so what we're doing essentially is we are moving the boiling point of the propane from the bottle to the end of the burner. We're simply transporting liquid propane into the nozzle of this combustor. And doing that, you can see here we are at 55 degrees input and about 400 and something on the hottest end of this burner. So we are now boiling propane inside of this cowling. Otherwise, this thing would be just as hot as the rest of it. And what that enables us to do is to run off a generous 50 to 60 PSI of liquid propane in freezing cold weather. And we're boiling it inside the nozzle so we won't suffer any additional bottle pressure loss. We can stay at this extremely high output. The output that we were just looking at is probably double what that uh, first torch was just showing us because the flame's bigger. It's bigger around, and it's burning inside of this thing as well. So, as far as the gas output, we're probably about 600,000 BTUs, and that other one's probably about 350 to 400. I'm not completely sure on that. But you can see here, our bottle's just not getting cold. This thing will just run like this indefinitely. This section of the combustion chamber is an annular vaporizer. It's about a quarter inch thick. Looks like this. All right, guys, so this evaporator, or vaporizer, I guess you could call it, actually slightly overperformed. We had gas discharge temperatures up to 250 degrees at some point, which is a little toasty, not bad. It actually turbocharges the flame, so it's not the end of the world. But it's good to know. Unfortunately, that means I now have to jot all this down in my lab book, which can be a bit tedious, but um, it's got to be done. When something works this well, I have to actually draw out the dimensions on paper so I don't lose it. And essentially what we have here is an emergency cutoff valve because if you just shut the torch off here, but you really want it to turn off instantly, you're still gonna have vaporizing propane inside of here. It's gonna be an issue for you. So, turning this valve allows you to immediately turn off the torch. And essentially what happens is, liquid propane comes through the neck, travels into the bottom of the vaporizer, and boils upwards. There are two rings, perforated rings inside of here, placed about this location that distribute the propane boiler, boiling mixture evenly, giving us a gaseous mix coming out this end here. This is a pre-burner that also creates heat for the vaporization process on the top end. 
and we have a little lip cowling here that is absolutely essential to getting this thing to work. Without that lip, the burner will not stay lit. So that is the combustion ch chamber and the propane vaporizer. So a similar scenario unfolded on me at a Kentucky job site I was at about two, three weeks ago. We had to dry a bunch of limestone and some other materials and the torch basically turned into a Bic lighter after about 10, 15 minutes because it was kind of cold outside also, a lot colder than today. And these Rosebud torches are okay for, you know, two to three minutes of use. But after that, they really do start to diminish in power so drastically they're no longer usable. So the liquid propane burner is definitely the way to go. And I'm gonna be designing several different versions of this, like the type that sit on a stand, like fish fry type burners and stuff like that even.